Yo, what's good, Bills Mafia? The Rev here, and you are now tuned in to episode four of Rated Rev, right here on the Buffalo Fanatics Network. All right, Bills Mafia. Now, before we go any further into the show, I need you to do this one thing for me, but you already know what to do. Like, comment, and subscribe. If you are not yet plugged into the Buffalo Fanatics Network, subscribe to the channel right now with bell notifications on. All right, now let's dig in. Yo, Bills Mafia, welcome back to the show. I hope you guys are as excited about this show as I am. And look, I can't get I can't wait to get into all of the things that we have on the docket today. And let me tell you something. News travels fast. I mean, news travels fast and it hits you like a ton of bricks out of nowhere. And at the time of this recording, I'm sitting here getting ready to talk about the Buffalo Bills. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we just get hit with a bomb of news late into Sunday evening when I think uh, uh, Tim Graham is, is the one who, who may have reported it first. I'm not too sure, but um, he's talking about the Buffalo Bills stadium, the new stadium. And I'm, I'm scrolling through Twitter right now, and he's, say, and he's saying um, a couple of sources at the owners' meetings in Palm Beach saying that Kathy Hochul, Governor, Governor Kathy Hochul, could announce the Bill Stadium deal as soon as today. And then he goes on to talk about how um, he's reached out for comment, um, but, uh, but they're at a team dinner um, at the time of this uh, recording. And so there's a lot that we can get into right now about the Buffalo Bills' uh, new stadium. And then um, I believe... Uh, where is it at? Even, yeah, yeah, John Worrell, I'm, I'm scrolling through Twitter right now, guys. John Worrell, he, he goes on and he talks about some numbers, I think. So he, he, he comes on and he says, uh, let me see here, where is it at? Where is it? Here it is. He says that he can report that the taxpayer's share of the yet-to-be-completed deal will be less than a billion dollars for the Bills Stadium, okay? So, so, guys, we, we've, we've got a potential new stadium deal in the works right now that could be announced today. I don't know at the time of this recording, maybe it's already announced right now when the show is going on. I don't know, but as of right now, nothing has really been officially announced, so I'm excited about that, guys. So stay tuned to that news and let me know how you feel about it in the comment section. But yo, that's not the only thing that dropped. That is not the only news that dropped on us tonight. Unrelated to the Buffalo Bills, you guys know that tonight is the Oscars, right? Can you believe what just happened? Well, it technically it didn't just happen as you're watching it, but it technically with me it happened just right now, not too long ago. On the Oscars, Will Smith just stood up and smacked the living daylights out of Chris Rock, who made a comment about his wife, and he went off on him. Open hand slap, live television, and went off talking about, you know, keep my wife's name at your mouth, et cetera, et cetera. Yo, it was crazy. I know you guys have already talked about it. I know you've, you've already seen it. It's blowing up all over Twitter right now. Uh, man, that is, that is wild. I can't believe that really just happened. On live television, on the Oscars, golly, crazy things are happening right now, guys. Crazy things are happening. But let's get back into the Buffalo Bills talk, the Buffalo Bills news. Okay, today, what I, what I wanted to talk to you guys today about is is what I think about a couple of positions on this roster. Today's show is entitled "Rate This," rate this. Okay, now with uh. The NFL draft, uh, about a month away, it, God, it is really around the corner. We are about a month out from the NFL draft. So with that on the horizon, what I want to talk about today is, 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 is a couple of positions um, on the roster, and then I want to rate these positions on the roster as we go forward into the draft. And if my math serves me right, there are five episodes of Rated Rev to drop between today and the draft. And so what I am going to endeavor to do is talk about some random positions between now and then that the Buffalo Bills need, may need to address, and then we're going to rate them. 
okay? And we're going to rate them using emojis, all right? So we're going to rate these positions using emojis. You got it? And I want you guys to participate with me, okay? Let's get interactive with this here. Even though it's not a live show, let's be interactive. I want you to, to let me know how you rate these positions in the comment section. All right, let's do this. And so what we're going to do today, we're going to talk about a couple of positions, a couple of key positions, all right? And that is a t position that, that really none of us are really talking about a whole lot. Number one, it's the tight ends. Tight ends, and then we're going to talk about the running backs, so tight ends and running backs are on the docket today. Okay. Now let's jump into the tight end position. All right. So let's look at the current Buffalo Bills uh, roster and depth chart. When we look at the tight end position, uh, we only have three, three uh, tight ends on, on, uh, in the room. We've got Dawson Knox, Tommy Sweeney, and then the newly added O.J. Howard, who, guys, I don't know about you, but I, I'm excited about. Okay, now Reggie Gillum, uh, I mean, you know, he, he's a fullback, but, you know, sometimes he's, he's, he's played a little bit of tight end, whatever. But um, I, on the website, though, on the Buffalo Bills website, they, just, they don't have him listed as a tight end. They just have Dawson Knox, Tommy Sweeney, and O.J. Howard. Okay, so the tight end position, let's take a look at, let's take, a, let's take a deeper look into this position, and then I want you to tell me how you would rate this position, okay? Now, number one, we've got Dawson Knox. Dawson Knox, tight end, number one on this team. Uh, he was drafted in the third round, I believe it was a 2019 draft, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, uh, 2019 draft, Dawson Knox. He is 25 years old. Now, let's look at some of these stats from last year, okay? Because I want to take a look at some of the statistics from last year um, that he had. So Dawson Knox last year had 49 receptions, 587 yards, and nine touchdowns. And his nine touchdowns were tied for second place in the NFL among tight ends, and he was tied with um, Hunter Henry and Mark Andrews. And he was, of course, second to Travis Kelsey, who, who only had 10. So, so Dawson Knox is right up there with the upper echelon of tight ends in the National Football League last year. And he exploded onto the scene um, in year three. You guys know him well. Uh, you know, when he came out of college, you know, he was really raw. He had a lot of things to learn. And at the time, uh, matter of fact, even, even even as as early as last year or 2020, a lot of us were talking about Dawson Knox. Like, what are we going to do at the tight end position? Because Dawson Knox was just not giving us anything consistent, right? I mean, he was flashing at times. He was showing, oh, he can make these incredible catches but then he'd have these, these lapses where he would drop some of the most easy passes. And then on, at other times he would, he would, he would, you know, truck people. Right. But then he, he then he, he just couldn't catch. He was like, he had, he had, he had bricks for hands. And so we were like, what is going on with this guy? He's got incredible potential, but he's just not being as consistent as he should be. And at the end of the 2020 season, there were rumors out about a certain tight end coming in as a free agent named Zach Ertz. You guys know about it, right? I mean, I don't know how many times he was linked to the team. I mean, we, we thought that Zach Ertz was coming to be a Buffalo Bill last year and last, last year's offseason. Well, we know it didn't happen, right? And so we thought that they were going to address the position in the draft, did not do that. And so they stuck with Dawson Knox and Tommy Sweeney, who we're going to talk about here later. And then all of a sudden last year, Year three, he just explodes. We know what happened in the in in, in the offseason. He went to tight end university, right, with with Kelsey and the boys, uh, um, and I think George Kittle as well. And then he came on this year and just took a huge leap. And so now we're looking at at Dawson Knox, like, oh wait a minute, I think we've got a bona fide tight end number one. I mean, like a top five tight end in the National Football League. Like, where did he come from, right? And so now we're now. Going into this season, we're hoping that Dawson Knox can continue on that trajectory, right? On, on that, that upward trajectory and continue to be better and better and better and be that true dynamic uh, 
tight end threat that we've needed for years, right? But he's not the only tight end that we need to talk about. We know we have Tommy Sweeney. Drafted in the same draft as Dawson Knox, but in round seven. Tommy Sweeney. I had a lot of hopes for Tommy Sweeney. I thought he was going to be something. I, and by, by no means am I, you know, um, um, just saying, you know, he, 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 he's just not going to amount to anything. But he hasn't really shown as much, right? Last year, uh, he had nine receptions for 44 yards and one touchdown. That's it. Nine receptions, 44 yards, and one touchdown. That is, that's hot garbage, okay? <laughs> Can I just be honest? That's hot garbage, okay? We, we cannot get that kind of production from our tight end number two, okay? And now, granted, I understand now he, he's, now in 2020, right, he experienced uh, a tragic uh, injury, right? I mean, he, with, that was related to COVID, right? He, you know, he had that heart issue related to COVID, but then he came into this year and he just wasn't, he just didn't play well. You know, even in spot duty, he still just wasn't doing well. And 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 in the entire year, I think we only carried just these two tight ends. And I'm like, gosh, I mean, if 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 Knox would have would have missed any games, like even even more games than he did when he got that broken hand, we would have been in trouble. Like like it was it was a serious problem, right? The lack of production from the tight end two sp- position was a problem, a serious issue on this roster. And I thank God that Brandon Bean had enough foresight to say, look, we need to secure that position going forward into 2022 because, heaven forbid, Dawson Knox gets injured. We cannot have Tommy Sweeney's production at the tight end two position. We just can't have it. And so what does he do? He signs a phenomenal tight end with tons of upside. You know the man, O.J. Howard from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He brings this man into the fold, guys. Former round one pick of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 2017, O.J. Howard has uh, he has tons of potential. He's about to, he's he's the same size, if not bigger than Dawson Knox. I mean, both guys are six five, six six, right? Two fifty plus. Guy ran at 4.540, okay, um, in the combine. He is extremely athletic, extremely gifted. Now, looking at last year's numbers, you're going to be like, oh, well, you know, he, he, was, he, was, he was okay, right? Well, last year's numbers, let's take a look at it here. Um, he ended the season with 14 receptions, 135 yards, and one touchdown in nine games that he started last year, okay? Now, we know that we also know that, that O.J. Howard, he, he's dealt with some injuries in his career. Right over the over the past a couple of years, oh, actually several, about three years, he's he's dealt with with high ankle sprains and 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 uh, hamstring injuries, you know. And then I think of the 2020 year with Tom Brady when they won the Super Bowl. I mean, he was injured, and then they, you know you, he had a he was behind Rob Gronkowski because Brady brought in Gronk, you know, his boy, and so he just had a hard time getting on the field and coming back from those injuries. And so last year was a down year for him. But I love the upside and the potential of O.J. Howard on this roster. I think that what the Buffalo Bills envision for this offense, especially as it relates to the tight end position, is running that 12 personnel, right? That one running back, two tight end uh, uh, personnel package on the field. And what that's going to do is open up up the offense you know last year when we, we when we tried to run the ball we didn't really have two tight ends that we could trust to actually you know uh, be a threat in the running game while also being a threat in the passing game I mean Tommy Sweeney was just he was just a run blocker that's about it you couldn't really rely on him at all in the passing game and so what so what happened we saw a lot of Tommy Doyle a lot of those jumbo packages where we brought in an extra offensive tackle right, to come into the game. Well, everybody knew that when he came in the game, we were running the ball, right? So there was really no, no secrecy there, right? And so I think that what's, what's, what's happening, what they're trying to do is when they bring in a guy like O.J. Howard, you can bring him on the field at the same time as Dawson Knox, and you can keep defenses honest because they're not going to know whether or not you're going to run the ball or those guys are going to go out and, and run routes, right? And, and, and O.J. Howard can run routes, 
with the best of the tight ends, right? He's got incredible hands. He's extremely athletic, big, strong guy. Uh, I, I'm excited about. I'm excited about having OJ Howard on this team, and he's going to open up the offense tremendously. I even think that you're going to see a lot more of him um, underneath routes. He may take away some of the, you know, some of the some of the routes and, and, and receptions and production that we saw from Cole Beasley. You may see that coming from from a guy like OJ Howard, right? So the offense is probably going to look a little bit differently this year. Remember, I told you on on, on a couple of episodes of before, ago that that. Sean McDermott said in his combine presser that he uh, is going to reset and rebrand, right? When he was talking about the the uh, the changes in the additions to the offensive staff, coaching staff, he was like, this gives us an opportunity to reset and rebrand a little bit. What is he talking about? He's going to, he's going to, he's going to rebrand the offense. So the offense is not going to look like it. Look. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I just don't think the offense is going to be the same. It's not. I don't think it's going to look the same. It may be. We may still have the same production, but I think it's going to look differently. Right? The way the offense produces is going to look different this year, with two tight end sets, two true tight ends who can run, and who can run block and catch out of the backfield are going to open up the offense tremendously. Sean McDermott is finally going to have his his real balanced offensive attack. And I'm excited about that. So as I stand here today, how do I rate this position going forward? The tight end position, man, I would rate this. I'm going to rate this with the dance emoji, the dance emoji. Why? Because I'm excited about what's to come with this tight end position. Like we already we we got a taste of Dawson Knox last year and what that looked like, right? Add in OJ Howard with the similar skill set but more experience. Hopefully he can stay healthy, right? Right. Let's let's knock on wood. Hopefully he he can stay healthy this year. Um, but man, a healthy OJ Howard in this offense with Josh Allen throwing him the ball and the weapons outside at wide receiver position. Oh my God! How can you not be excited? I'm, 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 you know, like that emoji. I'm, 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 I'm dancing, baby. I'm excited, baby. So let me know how you rate this position in the comments below. All right, tight ends, man. Yeah, I'm excited about that. And then on top of that, we we still got a draft to talk about. Could it be that the Buffalo Bills decide to add another tight end to this roster in the draft? I, I think it's highly possible. Because what? What? Let's talk about O.J. Howard's contract, right? Isn't it a one-year deal, huh? If O.J. Howard's contract is a one-year deal, then uh, we don't want to be in the same position again, right? With only one tight end on the, on, on the team. Yeah, it's a one-year deal, a one-year deal. And I think Bean is allowing him to kind of reset himself, right, and rebrand himself as well, so that way he can he can make more money uh, uh, and next year. Right. So so with that being said, I would not be surprised if Brandon Bean decides to go for another tight end in the draft. And there are some good tight ends in this draft class. So who could he who could he go for? I don't know. I mean, I, I like I like a guy like Jelani Woods. That's a guy I really like. Six foot seven guys running around here looking like a, a, a big old elk. <laughs> right. That guy is huge, man. He's huge. He's extremely athletic, fast, got hands. Man, you know, him. Um, and there, there's a couple of others as well. So so I'm interested to see. Um, even even Trey McBride. Even Trey McBride. Uh, and I'm, I'm looking right now. Um, and and, and uh, matter of fact, uh, let me just read this. Uh, looks like looks like on the Buffalo Lowdown. Um, we've got we've got a, a little report that says that the Buffalo Bills are among teams linked to tight end Trey McBride. What? Trey McBride says the Buffalo Bills have already signed uh, O.J. Howard this offseason. And with Dawson Knox on the roster, this is a position that seemed like Buffalo would not have to put any more effort to. However, the Bills have reportedly met with former Colorado State tight end Trey McBride according to Justin Mello of the Draft Network. Wow. 
Now, Trey McBride is a, is, a, is a phenomenal tight end. You guys look him up. So look at that, man. Three tight ends on this roster, potentially. I'm willing to bet that one of these draft picks, Brandon Bean, is going to draft a tight end. Just, 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 to be, just to protect himself, right, with O.J. Howard. He's on a one-year deal, but then he's got, he's got, injury, he's got injury history, right? So you want to protect himself. Tommy Sweeney is not that guy. Let's just be honest. He's, he's not that guy. So you add another dynamic tight end to this roster. I told you Sean McDermott is going to rebrand this offense. Y'all don't want to hear it. Y'all just want to think it's going to be Air Allen again. It's going to be Air Allen again. I'm trying to tell you the offense is going to be rebranded this year in an effort to protect Josh Allen. We're going to see, we're going to see something different. And it's, and it's different because it needs to be different. They've seen the same offense for a couple of years now, well, for a few years now. You, and now, we're, now, now that, that Brian Dable is gone and you insert Ken Dorsey with, uh, al- along with uh, uh, Shula and, and uh, uh, what's my man's name now, the quarterback coach, who, who's, who, who's, whose name is kind of escaping me right now. But you know who I'm talking about, right? So, so anyways, so it's, it's going to be different. It's going to look different. And it's in an effort to protect Josh Allen. He's going to run the ball more. Not him, but the team is going to run the ball more. Hey, hey, you heard it. I'm, I'm, you know, hey, don't cancel me. Don't come for me. Don't at me. Don't be like, yo, Rev, I don't know what the heck you're talking about. You know, you're tripping this and that and the other. No, it's going to be Josh Allen. He's going to be airing it out. You can't get, you know, you got to keep the ball in Allen's hands. Yeah, you got to keep the ball in Allen's hands, but you also got to protect him. You got to protect him from himself. Adding these weapons like this. Opening it up to the run game. It's, it's going to be a lot going on, guys. A lot going on. So so I'm excited. As you can tell, I'm excited about the tight end position. Dance emoji right here, baby. Like that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, moving along. The second position that we're going to talk about today is drum roll. Running backs. The running backs on this team, my gosh. Oh, you got, look, this, uh, let me get myself ready, okay? And I got to get myself in a, de- in a defensive position, okay? Because I, I know Mafia, I know you, Mafia. You guys don't want to hear it. You guys want to come for me. You want to come for Rev. You know, when I, when, I, when, you know, when I got my takes about the running back position, you act like the running backs is, is, is a dead position. Like, you know, you don't care. Like, we're going to get into this, all right? All right? We're going to get into it right now. Running back position. How do I feel about the running backs? We're going to rate this position right here. Okay. So now let's look at the roster, the depth chart. At the running back position. I can already feel you guys. I can can already feel your steam coming at me right now. I can already feel it. So we've got Devin Singletary, Zach Moss, Taiwan Jones, and then the newly added Duke Johnson. Okay, so now let's let's by process of elimination here. Let's go ahead and scratch out Taiwan Jones. Okay, because we know though he's a running back by position here. We know he's strictly special teams. He is not going to see the field on offense, right? That's he, that's just not what is what's going to happen. He's a special teams guy. Okay, who happens to play the running back position? All right. So now that leaves us with three uh, uh, running backs who will see who could see the field on the offense, right? Devin Singletary, Zach Moss. That came up in my mouth. And Duke Johnson. Let's look at some some stats here, okay? Last year, my man Motor Singletary. Motor Singletary, he had a, a he had a quietly productive year last year. I mean, when you look at the stats. As, as, as bad as, as there were some, 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 some games there last year in the running game, he ended with some pretty good numbers. All right, so last year, my man Moda Singletary rushed for, he had 188 rushing attempts for 870 yards rushing and seven touchdowns. That is very admirable considering how bad the running game was for a major, for a a good chunk of the offense last year right i mean there's a spat where like man can we run the ball at all okay 
So for him to end the year with a, with 870 yards, almost a thousand yards on that, like that was that's very good. I gotta give props to my man, Moda Singletary. He, Singletary, he did his thing, right? Seven touchdowns, very good. And then he averaged. He, and then you know, and Moda's always been a, a YPC guy, right? A yards per carry guy. He's always been very good, and he averaged 4.6 yards per carry last year. Very good number. Okay, but now let's look at the reception because, you know, Moda Singletary, he, he, he did, um, you know, okay in that game as well. He ended with 40 receptions for 228 yards and one touchdown. All right? My man, Moda Singletary. Now, look, I like Moda, okay? I do. Um, we, matter of fact, we, I mean, we saw his potential his rookie year. Remember when he was behind Frank Gore? I mean, he ended that year, I mean, with like, what, 700-something yards rushing? And that was, and he, I think he, he, he didn't even play for like four games or something like that, right? Because he was behind Frank Gore, right? So he, he's, he's flashed. He's shown that, hey, hey, you know, I can do my thing. Yeah, I'm a third-round draft pick, but hey, I, I can play. So I give it to him. I give it to him. And then, and then you know, um, the year before last, you know, uh, 2020, it was, uh, right? But then last year, he just like, we all saw, we all saw what we saw those pictures, right? Uh, in the offseason, we go yoked up Devin Singletary. He got rid of that baby fat and just got and just got swolled up, right? And he and he produced, like you can see it, like that translated onto the field. What whatever he did in the offseason translated onto the field. And he even looked a little bit more explosive, right? He's always been a tough tackle. Uh, people think that, that you know because he's small, he's a tough. He he, you know he's a jitterbug. No, I mean I mean he's a, he's always been a tough tackle. It takes it takes more than one person to, to get motor on the ground. But last year it was he was even running harder. Okay, he, and he's always had that, that cut on the dime ability, right? Not like not like my my, my real cut on the dime man. Uh, you know what I'm saying Shady McCoy, but he can still make you miss in the phone booth. He didn't have that speed. He never has that speed, but he can still make you miss in the phone booth. He he's he's been very good at that exceptional vision um he he's gotten more explosive uh last year so i you know i i like the fact that i like what motor can bring to the table my only thing though is he's coming into a contract year this is a contract year guys year number four do you think brandon bean is going to extend motor singletary I am not one to believe that he's going to do that. I don't think he's going to devote that kind of money to the running back position right now. I, I just don't. I could be wrong, but I don't think he's going to do that. I think he's going to. He may, he may give Motor a, a chance to kind of shine and earn his money this year. We'll see. Okay. But like I said, I, I like what Motor brings to the table. I just think that we can upgrade a little bit. Okay. But now that's enough talking about Motor. Let's look at the other backs on this roster, not named Taiwan Jones. Number two, we've got Zach Moss. Look, I'm sure Moss is a good guy, man, but he just kind of makes me want to throw up. Because I can't, you know, when, when we drafted him, when we drafted him, I was thinking that, yo, Moss is going to come here and he's going to be the thunder to Devin's lightning. I thought this guy was going to be the 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 bell cow I mean not necessarily the bell cow but he's gonna be the guy the hammer right the hammer back who's gonna close out games you know four minutes you know to go in the game he's gonna close it out run hard all that kind of... what do we see with Zach Moss just just disappointment right I mean di disappointment Let, let's look at last year oh my gosh ninety six carries. 345 yards, four touchdowns. All right. Now, now, now for a minute there last year, I was kind of like, oh, 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 oh. Zach Moss? Is that you? You know, I mean, for a minute, I mean, he he was for a minute, he he was the red zone king, right? I mean, I know because I I I, dra I drafted him on my, on my uh I didn't draft him, but I I picked him up on my fantasy team. Not gonna lie. Picked him up. I saw, I saw him getting those touchdowns in the red zone. I was like, oh, wait a minute. Let me go pick this guy up. All right? Because he was giving me them red zone touchdown points, baby. Yes. So I was like, okay, wait a minute. This 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 could work. This might work. But then we know what happened. He just kind of poof, the rest of the year. And I'm like, man, what is going on with this guy? This guy has no vision whatsoever. N none. 
Uh, no, I, I don't know how you can be a running back with zero vision. How, like, how is that possible? Like, you can't even call yourself a running back without vision. How is that possible? It's like, th- this guy would just rather run into the back of, a, of an offensive lineman than run through the hole. There, 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 was, there, have been, there have been times when I'm like looking at him, I'm like, man, what is he doing? Like, what, what does he see? And there's a clip. I can't remember what, I can't remember what game it was. Uh, uh, Rico knows what I'm talking about because he, because he posted it on Twitter and he was mad because there was a time we, they were in the red zone, Bills were in the red zone, and they handed the ball off to 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 uh, to, to Moss. To the right side, right, it was wide open, off tackle, off tackle. All he had to do was was just take the huge red sea that had been parted before him and just run to the end zone. What does he do? He's like, he looks at the hole, he's like, oh, nah, fam, I don't want that hole. Let me go ahead and run into the back of my offensive lineman right here. That's what I do because I'm Mr. Business Decisions. Mm, Boom. Smacked into the back of a lineman. I'm like, dude, are you serious, bro? Are you serious right now? Right? And then there was another time when he, Tripped over the over the legs of an offensive lineman when I'm like you right the touchdown right there and he trips over the who was that? I think it was Ike Butker somebody tripped over somebody's leg and I'm like oh my gosh I just I just can't I can't I I I cannot for the life of me I I cannot get excited about Moss going forward I, that's just me maybe you can I don't know to each his own right but I, for me I can't. And then he had 23 receptions, 197 yards uh, receiving and a, and, and, a, and a receiving touchdown. Meh, right? Meh. So that's Zach Moss for you, ladies and gentlemen. And then the third back that we have uh, right now is Duke Johnson. Duke Johnson. We picked him up in free agency, right? Now, Let's talk about Duke Johnson. What do you guys think about Duke? Let me know how you feel about him in the comment section. Duke Johnson. Uh, look, we all know what happened with J.D. McKissick, right? The dude pulled a skirt. Psych got him right to, to, to the pills and went back to, to D.C. Whatever, man. Do your thing. That's what you want to be in the first place? Stay over there. Have, have your fun. All right, go, Be over there with Carson Wentz. Have fun. Have at it. And so Brandon Bean went to plan B. It was like, all right, J.D., you know, all right, you're going to try to do that? All right, fine. We'll just get Duke Johnson. So he picked up Duke Johnson. This guy, I like Duke, man. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Duke Johnson comes out of, uh, um, he, he, he joined the NFL with the Browns. And, and if you are a fantasy football player, I mean, fantasy football owner, right, you know all about Duke Johnson, especially in, in you know, a few years back when he was, you know, Mr. Reception King out of the backfield. Okay. Last year with the Dolphins, though, he spent last year with the Dolphins. Let me talk about last year's numbers. Okay. Last year's numbers for Duke Johnson. He had 71 carries. In my 71 carries, 330 yards rushing, three touchdowns, and then he averaged 4.6 yards per carry. That's on par with Devin Singletary, right? Then on the receptions, he, he only had four receptions for 41 yards, no touchdowns, right? But when you look at his career, now, because this is what you need to understand about Duke Johnson. This is the guy's bread and butter, right? Right here, right here, this particular stat right here, this guy is the receiving back. He's a third down guy. He's not your lead back. He's not your bell cow, but third down, you need, you need, you need the money down, back slipping out of the backfield, boom, you need a catch, reception, boom, Duke Johnson is that guy. We all know him. Fantasy football owners, you know what I'm talking about. Duke Johnson was that guy. Over his career, he averages 9.2 yards uh, per reception in his entire career. So adding that type of a dynamic to the to the running back room is, is pretty good because it gives you that outlet. Okay. So now he's he's you know he he could he could possibly be you know the guy to to come in and, and spell motor or you know be that third down guy, you know, the reception uh back, you know, out of the backfield. Uh, you know. How do you feel about it? I like Duke, but overall, overall, when we're talking about the running back position, let's rate this. 
How do you guys feel about the running back position? I want to know. How would you rate them? Using emojis, okay? Using emojis, all right? Uh, but today, and we're talking about the running back position. How would your boy Rev rate this running back room? <sighs> yeah. That's it. That's it, right there. That little, that, that, yeah, that, that yawn, that yawn emoji. Somebody drop a yawn emoji in the comments right now. Yawn. Uh, you know, just boring. You know, b put me to sleep. You know, like like that's how I feel about this running back room. So incredibly boring. They're about to put me to sleep. This running back room needs an infusion of juice, man. I mean, we need some some juice, some excitement into this room. I'm I'm about I'm about sleepy, man, when I think about the running backs right now. I know I said, you know, Moto is a pretty good back. You know, I know I said that he he, you know, he rushed for 870 yards quietly last year. I know I said that, you know, he he he's he's not bad. I get that. But I want more. You call me greedy. You call me whatever you want. But I want more out of the running back room. I'm just oh, so sleepy and tired when I look at this running back. She's like, guys, let me come on. Like, we're the Buffalo Bills, man. We're like, we we we're known for having legit elite running backs. We had Shady McCoy. We had LaShawn McCoy. We had Fred Jackson. Marshawn Lynch, come on, man. And do I need to talk about the Hall of Famer? Guys, you're like, you're red, but that was back then, you know what I'm saying? This is a different league now. This is all about passing. No, you got it's, You got to be balanced. That's what you have to be in this league. You got to be balanced because, look, defenses are not going to allow you to keep doing the same thing over and over again. They are going to play you differently. You may, oh, oh okay, you beat me that time, but you're not going to beat me again. They get paid too. Defensive coordinators get paid too, right? They're going to scheme. We saw that this year. Did we not? Did we not see defenses defend the Buffalo Bills offense differently this year than they did in 2020? 2020, people were running. They were playing man-to-man -man against us, and Josh Allen was lighting them up, lighting them up, lighting them up. I mean, he was torching these guys. MVP candidate Josh Allen. Right? Well, what happened in 21? You think for one second defensive coordinators are going to sit there and let, and let Josh Allen destroy them like that again? Well, I mean, Josh Allen is just a dude like that. And he, he's going to do it regardless of what kind of coverage you play him. Right? But nevertheless, they switched it up. And they gave the Bills often some fits early in the year. You know it. What do they do? What do we hear all the time? It's cover two shell. Cover two shell. Cover two shell. Don't play man. Don't blitz him. He's going to torch you. Don't play man. He, the, the receiver's going to torch you. Play cover two shell, right? Play that coverage. Rush forward. Drop back in coverage, right? In that zone. And it was giving the Bills offense fits. You know, Josh, man, he don't. He, man, he wants to get. He wants to get that ball down the field, right? And so, the 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 natural uh, response, right? To that cover two shell as you run the ball. Guys, this is like chess, right? This is what it is. It's 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 moves and counter moves. Right? That's that's what it is. Okay, so oh, all right. So you're gonna sit here and torches. All right, so we're not gonna play man coverage on you now. Now now we're gonna play cover two shell. Now what you're gonna do? So we're gonna shut down all of that deep passing stuff and we're gonna make you just take your time and, and try to march down the field. And run the ball against us. Where I dare, I double dog dare you, Buffalo, to run the ball. I know you can't run the ball. You've got no lineman who can who can run block you. Your running backs are bleh. You can't run the ball. You got an offensive coordinator who's not gonna run it. He's not gonna call runs. He hates it. Having to call a run is like, oh my gosh, it hurts him to even have to utter those mouth those words out of his mouth to Josh Allen like run the ball. Bleh. Run the ball, Buffalo. I dare you. And what happened? For a, for a good portion of the game of, of the year, we didn't do it. Now, is it because we couldn't do it or because we refused to do it? It could be a little bit of both, right? But that is the counter move to that cover two shell. Sean McDermott even said it, man. Well, you like, well, 
you run the ball. You po- you should run against that, right? If they're dropping back in coverage and only rushing for it, you've got it's a numbers game, baby. There's not eight in the box. Run the ball. They finally started doing that at the end of the year. After after Ike Bakker got hurt and he entered it right in Ryan Base and offensive line kind of got healthy across the front. And then they finally started running the ball. Granted, they 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 ran Josh Allen to 700 yards. Right. You know what I'm saying? So so what I'm saying is is we have to be balanced. Okay. So now that we showed the teams that hey, Josh can still throw it against the cover two shell, but he can he can take his time. But then, you know, for the most part, we can kind of run against it. We can do more. We can be even better at that. Even better at that. And so I'm looking forward right now, projecting what does the ref see going forward into 2022 and beyond? What do I see at the running back position? Well, before I even talk about what I see happening, let me tell you how I would rate this position. And I want you guys to rate it. Don't be lying. Be honest. Tell me how you rate it. Don't be, don't be a Homer fan, okay? Be objective, ladies and gentlemen. Be objective. Let me tell you how I, how, how I would rate the running back room as it stands right now. Well, I already told you. What am I doing? I'm tripping. I gave you, I gave you the yawn. Oh, I'm sleepy. I'm tired. I, I'm tired of it. I am tired. I need some excitement, okay? And how am I going to get excitement into this room? How am I going to, how are we going to inject some life and some fire into the running back room? Well, when you look at the draft, baby, you look at some of these, some of these guys who are coming out, you all already know how I feel about it. My man, Brees Hall. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Depending upon how the board falls to us at 25, look, if, if Brees Hall is sitting there, which I, 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 I anticipate him being there, I want him. I want Brees Hall on this team. You say, Rev, you don't draft a running back in round one. You just don't do it. Are we drafting number five with a team who is in shambles in a rebuild mode? Or are we drafting at 25 with a built team with just a couple of holes that need to be filled who just came off of a divisional round playoff game and a year prior to that was in the AFC Championship game who is a legitimate Super Bowl contender right now as we speak before we even add anybody into uh, this offense or in, I mean, into, onto the team from the draft. Are we not a Super Bowl contending team? Yes, we are. We are. Now, am I am I drinking the Kool-Aid? No, because I know we still have to play the games, right? That, that are before us. The AFC is getting even more competitive. But for the most part, the Buffalo Bills are still that dog. Right? We're still that team. So at 25, extremely low first round draft pick, which is just like an early second round pick. You mean to tell me that if Brees Hall is sitting there at 25, and you've got a lot of these corners going off the board. And Bean doesn't try to, you know, trade up into the draft to get an elite cornerback, but he just kind of sits back and all these corners go off the board. Sauce Gardner, Derek uh, uh, Stingley goes off the board. Uh, uh, McDuffie, all the others, they all go off the board. You start getting down to like the fifth and sixth cornerback at 25. You mean to tell me that you're going to reach for one of them dudes as opposed to getting the number one consensus, number one running back in this draft at, at, at 25. Now, look, we all know what happened last year to us when we uh, faced the Indianapolis Colts with Jonathan Taylor, who was a second-round draft pick. Teams pass on him. That guy destroyed the league. Am I saying that Brees Hall is Jonathan Taylor? I'm saying we don't know. But what I am saying is that he is a highly decorated run, college running back. Extremely gifted, extremely talented. He's got numbers to back it up. He, he's not no slouch. He's, he, he, ain't no, he ain't no motor. He ain't no Zach Moss. He's, he's not one of them. He's a real RB1, not just an RB1 by default on this team. No, sir. No, ma'am. He is a legit RB1. 
put it down. Mark it down. Championship. Right? He, he's that dude. You put him on this team at 25. You jack at 25. You get him. Boom. Corners come out the board. You're like, nah, I don't want to reach. But there's Brees Hall sitting right there. You add him to this offense along with Moto Singletary because think about it. He, this is the last year of his contract, but you, you got the best guy at red on a rookie deal for four years, at least four years. I'm thinking we're going to win the Super Bowl between now and then, guys. So I don't think anybody's going to be tripping in the next couple of years if we, win, if we win the Super Bowl. And you're like, yeah, but the Buffalo Bills drafted Brees Hall in round one. Man, man, man. Come on, man. Ain't nobody going to be thinking about that. If you do, then there's something wrong with you. right? Ain't nobody going to be talking about Brees Hall as a first-round running back when the Buffalo Bills are hoisting up that Lombardi trophy. Due in large part to a man like Brees Hall running the rock, doing his thing. Okay? So... That's what I'm saying, guys. I, that's that's how, how I feel about the running back position. It's just kind of, oh, you know, we need to inject some life into this thing. So tell me what you think about the running back position. I want to hear from you. The tight ends, you got my rate. The tight ends, I'm dancing, baby. I'm, 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 boom. I'm excited about it. I am excited about the tight end position. We got Dawson Knox. We got OJ Howard. We got a potential draft pick. You know, we're talking about Trey McBride, maybe even Jelani Woods. I mean, I mean, come on, you add who? Can, how can you not be excited about the tight end position? And then you get the running back position. It's like, are we done yet? No, we can't do that. So that's how I feel. How do you feel, Mafia? Let me know how you feel. Okay. Because I'm going to chop it up with you. I'm going to talk back. You know how I do it. I get with you in the comment section in the chat. That's just how I do. And hey, I'm ready for you. So don't cancel me, though. Don't cancel me. Don't do that. We're family. Okay? You know how I feel. I, hey, hey, my opinion is my opinion. Your opinion is your opinion. At the end of the day, we're still going to be mafia. We're still family. Okay? You're going to love me in the morning. I'm going to love you in the morning, too. It's going to be good. Okay? All right? But yo, that's all I've got, guys, ladies and gentlemen. That is all I have for you today on another edition of Rated Rev brought to you by the Buffalo Fanatics Network in the house. You know how we do it, guys. So until next time, grace, peace, all of that jazz. God bless you and go Bills.